G'day and welcome back to Motoring Box. On today's episode, I'm gonna be getting my XR6 Turbo here ready for summer by doing a full flush on the cooling system. Plus, there's a little bonus on top to help dress up the engine bay. Stick around. All right, so here we are in the engine bay of my BA Mark II XR6 Turbo. And it's still looking really clean. A couple of weeks ago, I actually used some Armoral tire foam to tidy up this entire engine bay. So if you want to clean up your car's engine, check that video out. But today we're going to be doing a full flush of the vehicle's cooling system. This is actually something that's really good to do to your vehicle probably every four or five years. The more you do it, the better. But you know, they definitely recommend you do it every five years or so. So if you're not sure when the last time your coolant was actually flushed out, go out and buy the parts which I'm about to show you because it's actually a really simple job to do yourself here in the garage. So obviously if we're going to be dumping the existing coolant we're going to need some fresh coolant to put back into the system and I've gone for this Neulon Long Life Premium Coolant. You can get this in red and green. I'm not really sure what the differences are technically between the two colours but do have a look and see what your vehicle's owner's manual specifies. This car already has the red coolant and I do think the red will match up color wise better. And also according to the information on the super cheap auto website, this car can run red or green coolant. So really my decision didn't go any deeper than that. I went for the red. Seeing as this is a concentrate, you have to mix it with demineralized water to get the correct ratio of coolant into your car's engine. Now, if you're going to the trouble of flushing out your entire cooling system, it makes sense at the same time to replace the thermostat. These are actually really cheap. This Trident one only cost me about 25 bucks and they are really good to replace as a sort of preventative maintenance measure. And you can also get a new gasket to swap out as well because we really don't know what the existing gasket looks like. Another thing to remember when you're dumping old coolant out of your cooling system is to make sure that you collect it in a appropriately sized container. So I'm going to be using an old oil drain pan like this one and dispose of them properly. So make sure you check out your local waste recycling centers for details on how you can do that. And of course, you're going to need a funnel for adding the new coolant into the system. And then finally, which is an optional extra, but something I'm going to be fitting to my car is a new overflow cooling reservoir. Because this existing one, I think it was meant to have been white back in the day, but thanks to all the heat coming off the turbo of this car, it's gone this horrible sort of dirty yellow color. So. I think it's going to be really cool to swap it out with a brand new white one like this one. This is a Daco branded tank and overall it looks like it's fairly well built. But I guess time will tell as to how long it actually stays white. So I guess we should just get straight into it. So before I can drain any coolant I firstly need to remove the under tray. This is fairly easy to do, it's held on by a smattering of nuts and screws. So I'm going to remove all of them from the leading edge and then there's just one more screw in the center at the back of the tray. With the last one removed, I can simply lower the tray and drag it out from under the car. To drain the coolant in a BA XR6 Turbo, you have to remove the lower radiator hose. But some cars might have a bung in the bottom of the radiator, which you can simply unscrew to drain the liquid. But there's no such luck here, so I'm simply going to loosen the hose clamp and then start to pull the hose off the connector, making sure that I've got the drainage pan located directly underneath. And now that the cooling system is fully drained, we can get a look at the coolant. On first inspection, this coolant actually looks extremely dirty, but I think it's partly because it's sitting in this black drain pan. But after I tipped it into an old coolant container, it actually looks like a pretty decent color, very close to the replacement coolant, which I'm going to be adding into the system. With the cooling system fully drained, I'm going to turn my attention to changing the thermostat. It's actually really easy to change a thermostat on any six cylinder Falcon. You just need to loosen the two bolts on the thermostat housing and the entire top half will lift straight off. The thermostat is probably going to come out quite easily but the gasket is often going to be stuck on so grab a screwdriver and lever underneath until you can get it off. And what I'm doing next is simply getting an old cloth and a garden hose and then wrapping the cloth around the end of the hose so I can get a fairly decent seal and start to flush out the system. Firstly, I'm going to flush out the engine block and I can also insert the hose into the top of the thermostat housing to try and flush out the radiator. All right, so at this stage, you have a couple of options. If your cooling system looks really dirty, you can continue flushing it out with water and you can even refill the entire system with water and get a radiator cleaning product. 
add that to the water and drive around for a couple of days so that it can work its magic and clean out most of the sludge. And you can also run your car's heater to make sure that that new fluid and cleaning solution is also working its way through your heater core as well. And once you're happy, bring the car back, drop all that fluid, and then you can move on to the next step. I'm gonna skip all of that for this particular car because I don't think the fluid looked all that bad. Once I had a look at it in the bottle, it looks very similar to the new coolant I'm putting in. So what I'm gonna do next with this car is put the bottom radiator hose back on, start to fill this thing up with the new coolant up until it gets to the thermostat housing, and then I'm going to reinstall the new thermostat put everything back together and then fill the coolant up the rest of the way. Of course, after I put the new reservoir on as well, which should look fantastic. So let's get straight back into it. First up, I'm going to reinstall the lower radiator hose. And before I can refill the system, I'm going to have to swap out the reservoir. To do this, I simply need to loosen the two bolts on the driver's side of the tank and then loosen the three hoses which connect into it. All I'm doing here is using a pair of pliers to release the pressure on the hose clamps and then pull them out of the way. And with all three removed, I can finally get rid of this reservoir for good. I'm then going to give the surface here a bit of a wipe down before reinstalling the new tank. And it's really just the reverse of what we just did. Lower the tank down into place. There's a little notch that you need to fit the tank into before reinstalling the bolts. And then finally reconnecting the hoses, making sure you reconnect them in the same order, especially these top two, which are the same size. With the tank installed, I'm going to start pouring in the new coolant. Now this is a concentrate, which you need to install in a 50-50 mix meaning half coolant, half demineralized water. Now, according to a quick search, the XR6 turbo engine should take around eight liters to fill the entire cooling system. So I'm going to start by pouring in four liters of the coolant concentrate. Because I haven't reinstalled the thermostat yet, I'm also keeping a close eye to monitor the coolant level to make sure it doesn't start leaking out of the open housing. I was able to get all four liters of the coolant concentrate into the system, without seeing the coolant arriving at the thermostat area. So I'm going to start pouring in the demineralized water until I see the coolant starting to approach the level I want. Installing the replacement thermostat is a breeze. All you need to do is make sure the spring is on the lower side and then grab your gasket, which has a slit running around the inside face. And all you need to do is feed the gasket onto this edge of the thermostat all the way around. Make sure the surfaces on the upper and lower half of the housing are clean and you can then drop the thermostat into place and then bolt down the top half of the housing. With the thermostat in place and fully installed, I'm going to continue pouring in the roughly four liters of demineralized water, making sure that I fill it up entirely to the cold max level on the side of the reservoir. With the coolant reservoir cap in place, we can start the engine and keep an eye on the coolant levels. Run the engine for a couple of minutes, and if the coolant level drops in the tank, simply add additional coolant to bring it back to the level it needs to be. And that's it, the job is done. Now I'm really happy with how this has turned out. You know, the existing coolant didn't look too bad upon closer inspection, but I'm really happy that there's now fresh coolant circulating around inside this engine. And even better, this new overflow tank, even though it is a Daco aftermarket unit, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. You know, it fits beautifully, but it's not until you bring the old one back into the shot where you can really notice the difference in color. This old one looks horrendous. And I might have a go at cleaning this up just for interest sake. They are notoriously difficult to clean up just because of what heat does to plastic. It yellows it off and you know, I think it's nigh on impossible to get it back to clear white just like this one. But you know, I'll give it a shot and I'll report back if I've had any success. Although I think that's unlikely. And I do know that some of you are gonna have a go at me for not flushing out the heater core, but honestly, the rest of the coolant looked pretty good in this thing. And I have been running the heater a lot these days considering it is winter. So I think it's going to be all right. And then also in the weeks ahead, you are going to see me under the bonnet of this thing a few more times because this car has actually developed a bit of a misfire. It only happens at idle. It's really strange, you know, when you're above say a thousand RPM, this engine runs beautifully but it's just when you bring it back to idle or you're trying to take off at low RPMs, it sort of stutters a bit and you can hear the exhaust popping a little bit. After a couple of Google searches, I've narrowed it down to possibly the coil packs. And also the original owner did mention to me that when he got this car serviced last time, the mechanic told him that the spark plugs were due for replacement very soon. So I'm going to get new spark plugs, new coil packs, 
and a few other things which I'm going to save for the next video. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a like, subscribing, dropping a comment below and uh, checking out some of the other videos I've got on the channel. I'll see you next time.